that's Mr. Windus himself. Could you catch the sign on the fuselage? I wasn't looking for the small print. All I could see were the whites in his eyes and the foam around his mouth. The guy's got to be flipped. You're fighting me. Who's fighting? If I've never tried it, I wouldn't knock it. You know what a crop duster makes? Yeah, <laughs> a big hole in the ground. <laughs> Between 25 and 60 grand a year. Oh, uh, I can see it all now. Sir, you wouldn't send up a boy like that. Green, pucker green in a crate like that. Against, against the Kaiser's deadliest ace and a Staffel five, would you, sir? Oh, you would. Look, maybe Mr. Windows won't even give me a crack at it. I don't know. Anyone that flies that close to the ground, I wouldn't worry. He's probably got a spad all warmed up and waiting for you. A spad, huh? Oh, it's a great little fighter if the guns <laughs> work, you know. We use them on dawn patrol now. You know, we like them much better than our uh, spot with camels, you know. It's a game little beggar, if you like beggars, little and game. I think I should have written him first. Oh, I say, isn't that Paris up there? If you say so, Captain. If I say so, carry on. <laughs> Get back before she explodes. I always like my own. Can't be Wilson, Dora. I had 
one of them geniuses from the Bureau of Agriculture check the soil. No fungi, that's what the man said. So that leaves me a choice of curly top or spotted wheel virus. You know that's got to be them thrips. So I want them dusted with sulfur. You can take all them newfangled phosterins and demitins and pack them in. I tell you, Dora, sulfur's the way to kill thrips. No sulfur, Mr. Russell. You know I won't dust sulfur. I'll pay good, Dora. Six cents a pound. I, I don't want to discuss it. Now, let's stop kidding, Dora. You need the contract. Don't think I haven't heard how things are. Right now, Mr. Russell, all I need is the hand of merciful God. Summers just went in. Skeets has gone up to see if he's still alive. Dora, I'm, I'm sorry. I, I hope he made it. Now, you think about what I said. Sulfur. But I gotta know soon. Oh, uh, let me know about Summers, too. Thanks. Windus. I hope he's all right. The pilot. On our way down here, we passed somebody dusting a couple of miles back. I thought probably it was Mr. Windus. I guess it was Summers. He was the only one up this morning. Is your husband around? I guess you don't remember me. Todd Stiles. You came to the house a couple of times when your husband was flying the company plane for my dad. We had a party once to celebrate my conquest of the air. 14 hours instruction and off I flew all by myself, thanks to your husband. I was pretty proud of that. Some guys take 18, 20 hours before they solo. Where are they taking him? Him? It just came over the radio. I don't know where they're taking him or if they are. Who are you? Christina Summers. Sister? Wife. Oh. Once, not anymore. Oh. Mrs. Winderson. I'm sorry, I guess we came busting in at a bad time. I can remember worse. Is there a telephone? Inside my office. I'll hear faster. Skeet should be back by now. It wasn't far. We heard it from here. Mrs. Windus, if you'll just tell your husband we'll drop back. Uh, we wanted to see him about a job, but we'll drop back. Uh, I hope Mr. Summers is all right. Clean bill, Dora. No fractures, no concussions. No plane. The prop broke, just missed me. I'm afraid I scrubbed her, Dora. We have others. We'll do a rush job on the new one in the jig. I still have 100 acres to finish today. Load me up again, will you? Sure thing, Mr. Summers. I can call another pilot. Who, Dora? Rock of Gibraltar.
You never say die, do you, Christina? How long have you been in Phoenix? Do you need anything? Money? Well, why don't you say something? I'm listening to what you're not saying. All right, Christina. It isn't love that makes you so determined. It's sheer habit. A desperately bad habit. I'd hoped you'd finally broken it. You only taught me the questions, not the answers. There aren't any, Christina. Nowhere. Never. What kind of job? You ask for a job, what kind of job? I'm happy to be recognized. Frankly, I didn't know what was going on. You're not even remembering me. I remember my first hair ribbon. I was four. What kind of job? Crop dusting. Mr. Windus taught me to fly. I thought he could teach me to dust crops. 50-hour training period, a year's apprenticeship. We're in no hurry. Oh, this is Buzz Murdoch. Hi. I, I thought if Mr. Windus gave me a crack at it, maybe he could find something for Buzz to do. Swamper. Oh, what am I supposed to do, wrestle alligators now? Pay $65 a week. I'll take it. I'll ask Summers if he says he'll teach you all right. Thanks, Mrs. Windus. Tomorrow morning, 7 o'clock. Nothing like old family friends. She's changed. I wonder if Vicky's changed. Vicky? Her daughter. Of course, I didn't pay too much attention to her. She was 15 in a barber pole. Four years ago? Mm -hmm. She's changed. <laughs> Maybe not mine. I mean, she's older. Older than what? Older than you. I'm not carrying any birth certificate. And she's a missus. An ex-missus. Isn't that what she said? What she said was, where are they taking him? Now, him, that's Summers. I didn't hear her asking about you. Oh. Sobersville. She really grabbed you, huh? Yeah, like cotton candy at Madison Square Garden. You know, uh, going in there and listening to her sing, that's not gonna help any. That's candlelight and martini blues, and that's buried a lot of boys. You got a dark suit, buddy? Be my pallbearer, okay? Okay, like the man said, it's your funeral. It's a long, long while From May to December But the days grow short When you reach September When the autumn weather 
turns the leaves to flame One hasn't got time For the waiting game Oh, the days dwindle down To a precious few Precious days I'll spend with you. When the wind windows down to a precious brew, say. Precious years I'll spend with you. It's almost 2 o'clock. We have to be on the line at 7. I know. I, I just want to talk to her or try to. All right. Do me a favor, will you? Don't try to pick her up from the car. I mean, it's just too much. You know, kid stuff. Go in the lobby and rally like a real traveling salesman. You make it sound so nice. hanging at this afternoon, remember? Oh, yes. And this evening at the French Quarter Safari, nine to one. I didn't miss a set. You were great, oh. just great. Well, thank you. I didn't see you, and the lights. <laughs> That's a bad sign. Morning paper signifies an end to the night. Oh. I'm afraid it's just been one of those days, Mr. Uh, Buzz. Mr. Buzz? Oh, no, no, just Buzz. I mean, it's um, the original monosyllable. Oh. <laughs> Well, uh, if you'll just excuse me. Well, no nightcap? I mean, just for kicks. Tonight's kicks or tomorrow's bruises. Well. They usually come to my dressing room, men like you. Sometimes they uh, follow the flowers in, or the iced champagne. Or now and then they skirmish behind a mink. But you know something? Take away the flowers and the champagne and the mink, and it's the same man with the same presumption. A girl is always guilty as charged. 
until proved innocent. I didn't mean it that way at all. Of course not. Mrs. Summers, bad start. Worse than that, no start at all. That bad? I think the slap fits the face. Tokyo. Look, friend, it's pretty early for funnies. We didn't get much sack time last night. Mrs. Windus told us to be here at 7 o'clock this morning. Yeah, she said you'd be here. Okay. Where do we start? Those keys. They for the Corvette? Yeah. Well, use them. Do yourself a favor. Use them to get you out of here. Where's Mrs. Windus? Oh, she's in town at the store. But don't worry, it's nothing personal. She's sorry. She went to Summers and she asked him to take the on 50 hour syllabus. But Summers said negative. And when he says negative, that's negative. Two negatives make a positive. Where is Summers? Never mind Summers. It's not his outfit. Mr. Windus will straighten it out. Not this year or any other year I ever heard of. He was killed last January. Killed? Yeah. He was dusting it with sulfur. And then static electricity and fire. Oh, boy. I kept beating at her. When do you expect Mr. Windus? Oh, forget it. You didn't even know. I'd like to at least tell her I'm sorry. Now, she doesn't want to hear that. She wouldn't even admit he's dead. Come here. See this frame over here? Well, we were building it for him. It was something special. Something he always wanted, but he couldn't afford it. We were going to scrap it after he was killed. We could have used the inventory, but uh, no dice. Mrs. Windus says that it stays right here. It says that we're gonna finish it for him one of these days. Sounds like she really needs some help. She does. How about if I got Summers to teach me? No chance. What about some of the other pilots? There are only two of them. They wouldn't be interested either. What's the matter? Is Summers afraid a little competition might show him up? Look, fellas. Look for a job somewhere else. There's nothing here but trouble. Only trouble. You're here. I'm stupid. It's contagious. Where's Summers? You know where Camelback Rock is? Mm -hmm. well, we have an airstrip there on the northwest slope. He's out there waiting. He's all alone. He's waiting for the wind to die. He's sitting there with his wings, a half a ton of phosphorin, and 425 horsepower. He's all alone, and that's the way he wants it. And that's the way he's gonna keep it.
Ten minutes. I bet you'd let me stand here ten minutes before you said a word. Just leaving through Carlisle here. Under all speech that is good for anything, there lies a silence that is better. Fitting, don't you think? Why won't you teach me? It doesn't matter. It does to me. You see, Mr. Windus taught me to fly. Now, this may sound corny to you, but I'd like to work for his widow. Can you understand that? What are you knocking yourself out for, Todd? To ride a broomstick over some cabbage patch with a squadron of witches? Your friend has the right idea. Well, the wind seems to be dying down. to dream about you. I wish someone had told me. Do you remember me? Oh, yes. I was just telling my friend how you looked when you were 15. Like a barber pole, that's what he said. And uh, how do you think I look now? This kind of barber pole, nobody would ever go inside for a haircut. Mickey! Skeet Carl told me these boys were coming out here. Mickey, move your car. You're not going to teach him. Hey, wait a minute. You can't be serious. You wouldn't fly with Summers, would you? Why not? Because of him, my father's dead. I knew. I knew. I'm not here. Oh. Mrs. Summers? Yes? Is everything all right? Oh, everything's fine, Mr. Reed. It's not fine, Christina. It's not fine at all. I came here to beg. When did you ever have to beg me? Christina, you get out of my life and stay out! Did you take up drinking to brace yourself for this reunion? How many times do I have to leave you? How many countries 
Airports, hangars. Let some other man have you. One who wants you. Live, Christina. But leave me alone. I'll follow you till I die. On my knees if I have to. Or crawling. I'll never leave you alone. Or stop loving you. No matter how hard you make me try. Look at me, Christina. Is this the face of a man who loves you? Are these the words of a man who wants you? Nobody's what he appears to be. Isn't that what you always said? I look alive, don't I? But I've been dead for years, Christina. Admit it. That's not true. This arm. That's Jamie's arm. Shot off by cannon fire from an ME-109. Meant for me. This hand. That's a Belgian squadron leader who saved me over Dunkirk. My ribs, my stomach, my legs, my guts, Christina. They all belong to dead men, one after another, shot and burned. Not me. That first crash. The mail and the passengers. Remember, Christina, at Managua, that first crash? Who walked away from it? Who walked away on the legs of the dead? That wasn't your fault. It's never my fault. Wherever I am, whatever I do, whatever I touch, dies, rots, burns, decays, and I keep climbing a ladder. Higher and higher, bone by bone and skull by skull. Christina, I told you I came here to beg. I'm begging you now. You get away from me, as far away from me as you can get. Your cue is coming up, Mrs. Summers. Thank you, Eddie. I just have three songs. I'll be right back. Wait for me. Promise. Christina. I can tell you where the North Star will be a thousand years from tonight, but I can't tell you where any one of us will be tomorrow morning. Wait. Don't ever try to see me again, Christina. This lovely day will lengthen into evening We'll sigh goodbye to all we've ever had Alone Where we have walked together Content. You loved me once in April. Your lips were warm, and love and spring were new. But I'm not afraid of love. sorrows for I'll remember April and you the fire will dwindle into glow For flames in love Live such a little while I won't forget 
But I won't be lonely Tonight. I just want to say one thing, Christina, and then I'm cutting out. I don't want to hear it, honestly. I'd only lose my temper, and you seem like a nice boy. Let's give us both a break. Look, I just wanted to ask, is there anything I can do to help? Help? Well, I don't quite even know how, but... Well, a guy sees a lot of floor show from a ringside table, and I caught the closing act tonight, you know? I mean, summer's staggering out, loaded, you on the stand. You should see how the spotlight makes the tears shine. You know, there's a, there's a worn out line. It's none of my business. But the more I kick around, the more I see that everything is everybody's business. You can't stand in the background. You don't help that way. Everything passes you by. End of speech. Look, why don't we leave it like this? If you ever need a pep talk between halves or someone to break up a sugar cube in your coffee, anything, anything at all, I'm your boy. I'm staying over at a place called the Martinique. Good night, Christina. Just the tide coming in. Then we're right back out again. Cigarette? She is 19, isn't she? Dancing. Besides, I'm chaperoning. Out here. the magic. Where's Summers? How would I know? Do you want me to explain, Vicky, in front of these boys? Well, last time I saw him was this morning, the Camelback Strip. Todd was there and Buzz. He just took off and flew away like he always does. Since then. Where's he gone? How would I know? You seem to know all the back alleys, Vicky. 
Which one did you leave him lying in? I don't know what you're talking about. Let me tell you. I need Summers. I need him right now, right this minute. There's been a change in the weather. They're expecting a severe frost at dawn. I have a customer who'll pay a thousand dollar bonus to save his crops from freezing. Do you know what a thousand dollars means to us right now, Vicki? Or don't you care? I care that you come busting in here, in front of Todd, with your filthy mouth! <laughs> Mrs. Windows. Vicky forgot her shoes. Todd, do you still want that job? Yes, we do. Okay. When do we start? As soon as you can find Summers and bring him to the field. This time, I'm getting loaded just walking back and forth along so many bars. That's it. Every bar in town, top to bottom. The apartment, the club, the Turkish bath, I don't know where he could be. Maybe a friend's pad. What friends? You got a point there. Maybe Christina knows. I mean, not where he is, but what his habits are when he bells. Christina? Buzz. It's about Mr. Summers. What about him? Well, I hope we didn't wake you up. What about him? Well, uh, we're trying to find him for Mrs. Windus. Uh, some kind of an emergency job. We looked in all the bars, but well, where does he go when he gets stoned? Leave him alone. Tell Mrs. Windus you can't find him. You think he'd want it that way? All right. He's never been drunk before, so I, I'm not sure where he'd go. But other times, when he was troubled or, or something had happened, he'd go out and jump. Jump? Parachute. Oh. I think I got a live one. Yeah, Summers. Look. I don't care how much you want to pay. One maniac a night is all I can accommodate. A man has got to get his sleep. What? Oh, you're not going to jump, too. Oh, you want to know where Summers is? Oh, well, just a minute. Oh, just about this time, he should be over the Breckenridge foothills. Yeah, I remember. When he flushed my pilot out of bed, he said that's where he wanted to jump. More cross currents in there. <laughs> How do you like that? Yeah, and good night to you, too.
have a feeling I could stand here for ten minutes and neither of you would say a word. Didn't he have a quote for that? Thomas Carlyle. Well, there must be some reason for your being here. We figured the parachute might not open and we wanted to be on hand to celebrate. Well, honesty clears the air. It's like a 10,000-foot free fall clears the head. Well, now that all our heads are clear, Mrs. Windus sent us out here. Some kind of a deal about frost. Can you run me out there? That's the general idea. Oh, just one thing. She said if we found you and brought you in, we could go to work, me flying and buzz swamping. Whatever that is. Now, uh, how does that hit you where you stand? You sure you know what you're doing? Well, what I've wanted to do ever since I drove into Phoenix, fly some crops and make some dollars. That's not it. That's not it at all. How old are you? 24. Well, you're too young. For what? To die. Well, why not? Everybody does, except me. All right, but you might as well be told I'm a jinx, a Jonah. We're not superstitious. Hop in. Destiny comes in all sizes, doesn't it? Small car in the middle of an empty field. What do you say your name was? Todd Stiles. Todd Stiles. All right, but as I told you, to me it's just one more name to remember. One more. from Columbia Pictures, Herbert B. Leonard, executive producer.